everyone, so today I'm going to recreate my wedding day makeup look for you which is very exciting, it feels very weird sitting here and kind of setting this up to do a makeup tutorial because it has been a very long time so apologies if I'm a little bit rusty but I thought I would share this with you in case there are any bride to bees out there who want to do their own makeup in the day, there's definitely some products here and some tips here that I think would be helpful to know. I did my own makeup not because I think that I'm the best at doing makeup, I'm definitely not, but I'm just so finickety and I've never really had someone do my makeup and think that it looks spot on. There's always been something that I've wanted to rub off or change and also just to keep costs down. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. I did my own hair. I kind of did it like how I have it now. I just put some GHD like curls through it and I did my own makeup and I have to say that I was pretty chuffed with the result. It lasted all day. I think from the pictures that I've seen it looked pretty good and I was just really chuffed with it. I definitely practiced a couple of times before and I would say that would be my first tip would be have a couple of times, maybe just a couple of afternoons at the weekend where you can go through, try everything on your face, really see how everything works together, take a couple of pictures, see how it looks in pictures, all of those kinds of things. Make sure that your lip colour works with your eye colour, all of that. So you've got it all prepped, you know what makeup products you're using, and so on the day there's just no stress. And actually there was no stress at all on the morning, I got ready really quickly. I was sort of sitting around, I was like, oh, I should have filmed this for a YouTube video, I have so much time. So that was really great, and it's definitely not a super glam bridal look, nor is it super natural, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. I like to wear really natural, barely there makeup, that's just what I prefer on myself and what I like to do. But on the day I was like, I kind of need to be like a little bit more polished than normal. So that was the vibe that I was going for, like a really bronzy lid, a little bit of shimmer on the eyes, a really nude lip, just really, really loved it. And there's definitely some of my makeup favourites that are coming out to play here. But if you want to hear more about our wedding day, Mark and I have done a wedding q and I'll make sure that is linked up here for you. I love that video. Thank you so much for all of your lovely comments as well. There's just like a lot of love going on and it feels really nice. We should spread some love. So thank you so much for that. And also, if you want to see the prep that I did before the wedding day, so like tanning advice, skincare advice, the treatments I got done, where I got them done, I will link that down below for you because I've done a blog post on that today. So there'll be lots of links, everything will be down in the description box below. And I would talk about skincare, but I do mention it in that post. So definitely check that out for the skincare that I did on the morning and kind of the tools I used for my hair because today is just going to be beauty because it's, otherwise it's going to be extremely long. So I will get started with the first thing that I put on my face. So after I had showered and done my hair and put my skincare on, I went in with primer and my favourite one at the moment is this. It is the Becca First Light Priming Filter a gorgeous, gorgeous primer. It's really hydrating, which is why I ended up using it on the day because I just want it to be very glowy and to look really radiant and I feel that this really gives me that finish. Oh yeah, and you wanna make sure you're taking everything down to where your dress goes. My dress actually cut quite low. Mark was like, oh, I was really surprised by how low cut your dress was. And it was actually quite low cut, but because I have no boobs, there wasn't really anything to see there. So I took all of my like foundation and primer and base and everything down all the way down the neck on the day. Now before we get onto foundation, I have a step for all you fellow red girls out there. If you're very red in the face like me, this is a complete lifesaver and I'm so happy that I discovered this before the wedding day because I'm not quite sure what I would have done without it. It is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Redness Neutralizing Correcting Cream. It's basically like a corrector slash extremely dense foundation in one. You do not need to use a lot of this. I did not use this all over my face. I just use this in my cheeks, which is where I get really red, and I knew that I'd be crying and really happy and laughing, and I was gonna get extremely red in the face. And every time that I looked in the mirror and I felt really flustered, or if I was crying and I felt that my face looked really red, this just blocks it out. It is incredible. So I'm desperately trying to look around for my beauty blender because I don't know where I've put it. Oh, here! But a beauty blender is your best friend when it comes to this product. I find that applying it with anything else is just too heavy. Like I said, you really, really, really don't need a lot. Another good alternative to this would be something like the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Correcting Cream? What's it called, Sensual Skin? Sensual Skin Enhancer. I think that's what it's called. It's an extremely full coverage foundation. So I'm taking a tiny dab of that applying it on my cheeks and on my nose. I get quite a red nose as well. And then I'm just gonna blend that out with the Beauty Blender. But yeah, like I said on the day, every time I looked in the mirror, I was really surprised. I was like, oh, 
I'm not as red as I feel. On to foundations, and I genuinely feel like my whole beauty life has just been about discovering the perfect foundation. And there's definitely a couple that I really, really like, but they're sort of for different occasions. And thinking about like the wedding foundation was such a thing for me. I feel like some people it'd be lipsticks or it'd be like nail colors, but for me, I was like, what foundation am I gonna use? And in the last months, I've bought and used so many foundations trying to find the perfect one. And in the end, I went for one that I discovered probably about five years ago. So money well spent, great. Um, I was gonna use the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric in the shade four, but I was using a self tanner on my face up to the wedding day that was giving me more of like a yellowy kind of undertone. And that on me definitely has more of a pinky undertone. So when I did practice and when I did use that, it just looked too kind of pink from up here and yellow from down there. So that wasn't really working out too well. There was also the Hourglass Vanish Foundation. I was really interested in that. I use that in the shade Shell, by the way. But I was really interested in that because I know that Lily used it kind of on her cheeks on her wedding day. She incorporated it, I think, with MAC face and body. I think that's what it was. So I was like, oh, maybe I could do a similar thing and incorporate it with something like the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. But it just wasn't working for me. It's just a little bit kind of drying and a little bit quite, I don't wanna say cakey because it's not cakey, but I could just see it on my skin and I don't like foundations where I can like see it on my skin at all. So that one wasn't gonna work out, but I did find the perfect mix and it was the Luminous Silk Foundation by Giorgio Armani. I know, I know, literally been using this for like years and years. This is in the shade four. For some reason, this goes a little bit more yellow toned on me than the Power Fabric one. I don't know why. And then I actually blended it in with some of the Becca Backlight Priming Filter because I just didn't want to look too kind of covered up. I didn't want it to be too full coverage. So I basically took a pump of each on the back of my hand and then just blended them together. And on the day, I actually used this brush and I never use this brush, but this is the um, Clinique Buffing Brush. But I just like how it's really, really light. I feel like you always get a really nice light coverage with this and nothing too heavy. So I don't normally use this brush because it takes quite a while, like it's a real lengthy process, but I was like, you know what? It's my wedding morning. I can like spend a bit of time on my base. So that's the blended out result of those two products and I just love it. I feel like it gives it a real dewiness and luminosity to the skin, but not in an obvious or like greasy looking way. And it really dries down as well. You're not left feeling tacky, which is really nice. Now here is where I went wrong. And if I was to do this again, I wouldn't have used this product. This is the NARS Creamy Concealer in the shade Light 2 Vanilla. And I just feel like this looks a bit dry on me. Like when I kind of got to the end of my base, I kept going back into like broad, stark, natural daylight to kind of look at what it looked like on my face. And it was always under my eyes. I just felt it was a bit dry, a little bit cakey, a little bit creasy. I know that this has the coverage and that's why I used it on the day because I thought, oh, it's got really good coverage. So I would use that. But actually, I feel like something like the Glossier um, Stretch Concealer, I'm so into this now that whenever I use anything else, it just feels creasy and dry and cakey on me. Whereas this is so moisturizing and I think I would have preferred to use something like this and then put like a powder kind of over the top of it to sort of take away that shine from under your eyes that you don't always want all the time. So sorry NARS concealer, but today I'm gonna to go back to the Glossier uh, one and just take a couple of dabs of that under the eye. I mean, I knew that my under eye makeup was gonna get completely ruined anyway because I was gonna cry through the whole thing. So I wasn't too worried about it but I just took a little bit of that kind of round the corners of my nose as well and on the end of my nose and blended that in with a beauty blender. I'm not someone who likes to powder my skin. I like to leave it fresh, but I knew that if I wanted it to last all day, I was gonna have to apply a bit of powder. And my favorite one by a mile is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural Powder. I use this in the shade Light Plus. I do also have medium, but I didn't want to look orange. <laughs> You'll notice later on in this that I didn't use a bronzer. And it's because, I think because I've used like a self tanner as well, I just didn't want to look orangey or look back at the pictures and be like, wow, you really overdid it with the bronze. So when it kind of came to powders and things on the face, I tried to keep it as natural as possible and not go for my tan shade of things, but instead go for my kind of winter shade of things. Now I definitely wasn't as regimented with working out before the wedding as I have been in the past. So a bit of a 
contour was required and I always use this is like a Burberry slanted angled contour brush I'm not sure if they actually sell this or it just came as part of a set but some kind of angled brush I find is really good for applying contour and on the day I use the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder in the shade medium you guys have seen me use this a million and one times before I would have gone for light but I kind of wanted a bit of structure to my face because there isn't much structure going on at the moment so I just took that kind of under the cheekbone and then under the chin or chins. And then I just blended that out with my beauty blender because I kind of came out my room. I had the blinds down a little bit so my room wasn't full on um, natural light. And when I'd come out into the natural light, I was like, oh God, I look like I have a beard. So I sort of blended that in with a beauty blender to get more of a natural finish. If you want to be a blushing bride, then this is where I would suggest putting on your blush. But you guys know me, I hate blush, and I wasn't going to make an exception for my wedding day. And I didn't use any bronzer either, like I said, because I didn't want to be an orangutan. So I just actually finished off the face with a highlighter, and this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. <laughs> the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Moonstone. Took that on, I think this is like the powder brush that I use, the Bobbi Brown one, and kind of just use that on the tops of the cheeks, on the nose, on the chin, kind of uh, everywhere because I just wanted to be nice and glowy. Now for my brows, as I mentioned in my blog post, I got them tinted and shaped around two weeks before the wedding because I always think when they're first done, they look a bit severe, but then I really like them a couple of weeks after when they've grown out a bit and the tint isn't as strong. So luckily I only kind of had to sort of give them a little brush and I did put some of the Glossier Boy Brow through but that was more just to um, keep them in place rather than anything else. Then before I got onto eyeshadow, I did use a primer. This is just the best one. Like my eyeshadow was completely intact still by the end of the day. This is the NARS um, Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Love it. I just put a little bit on each eyelid and then I blended it in with my finger. And I used a lot of primer actually. I went, I kind of went in quite heavy with it because I really wanted my eyeshadow to hang around because I knew there wasn't too much going on. Ooh, just hit myself in the face. I knew there wasn't too much going on um, like base wise in terms of colour and I knew that my lipstick would come off so I really wanted my eye makeup to stay in place. When it came to eye colour there's so many that I love but I didn't want to use one that I wear every day. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit different, one that I perhaps only use kind of more for like special occasions or filming or when I want to look like I have a bit more makeup on. And when I go through my photos on my phone and I like sometimes scroll through to the top because I'm trying to find a photo, there's a photo near the top where I'm wearing this eyeshadow and I always look at it and I'm like, damn, that eyeshadow looks good. Like it just really complements my skin tone really well, my eye shade really well. And whenever I wear it, I just feel like I look nice. So isn't that what you want on your wedding day? So in the end, I went for the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Betty. I have used this a million and one times before, especially in like going out tutorials and bits and bobs. I applied it with a MAC 242 brush and I just put that all over the lid. And I actually applied it a little bit heavier than I normally do. Like normally I just put a little bit on and kind of blend it out and I get more of like a warm diffused look. Whereas this time I went quite heavy on the eyelid. So it did look really metallic, really sheeny and then just blended it out around the outside. So I will get my blending brush ready, which is my MAC 217, just making sure it's not dirty. And I will go in and I would suggest doing an eye at a time with this because it kind of dries down quite quickly. So I just kind of put it on, making sure it's really pigmented in the center of the lid, blending it out slightly so it's a little bit softer on the edges and then blending it out. And then just building that up until I get to a place where I'm happy with it. And then just doing the same on the other eye. I just love those warm tones on the eye, but I do think that something kind of shimmery, like a soft metallic, is just a very pretty thing to wear. I know some people go down the matte route, and I just feel like I wear mattes every day. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit more amped up in my everyday. And I did actually go in with this. This is the um, Charlotte Tilbury look in a palette. I can't remember what shade it's called, but it's the kind of deepest one, the more like bronzier one. I did use this, this shade here, the three eye smoke one, and I just took that on the MAC, what one's this, a 224, and just took that slightly in the crease. It goes off very warm because it's obviously got quite a warm base, but I just did a little bit of extra definition in the crease. Not a lot, but just a bit of something. Then to finish 
finish off the eyes, I didn't go in with an eyeliner, but I kind of wish I had something like the Charlotte Tilbury and the Rock and Coal eyeliner in Barbarella Brown would have looked really nice, just kind of on those outer corners. I was just slightly worried that eyeliner was perhaps something that could get a little bit shaky and a little bit messy and I might feel like I'd ruin it. So I didn't go in with that, but I have got eyelash extensions on at the moment and I did have those on for the wedding day and just think they were a little bit fuller back then because we're kind of talking like two weeks later now so they were quite full but very natural looking but I wanted a little bit of definition on them so I did run a tiny tiny bit of mascara over them but not a lot at all literally just a little bit to like beef them up so I'm just going to get them all going in the right direction and then apply some mascara over the top of them and I really hope my beautician lady doesn't see this because I'm using a waterproof mascara right now and you're not supposed to use waterproof mascara on them because uh, it's really bad for them. Sorry, it's the only one I've got. But I'd say that eyelash extensions were awesome. Um, I only needed this tiny, tiny, tiny bit of mascara and it meant that I wasn't worried about mascara running down my face when I was crying. It just looked really natural and very fluttery. I didn't have to bother with like strip lashes or anything like that. So imagine it with a bit more lash and that's definitely what it would have looked like more on the day. But now onto lipstick and this was such an easy one for me. There was no kind of question in my mind what I would wear as my wedding day lipstick. I do wish that I'd gone and got a lip pencil to go with this just to give me a little bit more definition and provide more of a base because this comes off quite quickly and I couldn't be bothered to like reapply my lipstick throughout the day. I think I reapplied it once before I went down the aisle and that was literally it. I was like, nah, it's gone, it's fine. But this is the Chanel Rouge Coco lipstick in the shade Adrienne. It's my favourite nude. I mean, look at what cut, like look what shape I've made that into. It's so weird. I just think this is a fab colour, really natural, very, very, very close to my natural um, lip colour anyway. I'll show you. But I just felt like it looked really polished, it finished off the look really well, went good with the eyeshadow. So this was just, this was always going to be the colour that I was going to use. And then the final step is to go in with a bit of setting spray. I just used the um, Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. Ooh. But this is the finished look. I feel like it's basically my everyday makeup, but just with a couple more extra steps thrown in to kind of beef it up colour-wise in places, and then also beef up the longevity, and it definitely worked lasted all day and basically all products that I had I didn't have to go out and buy anything else which is great thumbs up but I really loved it it feels very me I felt very comfortable in it and it's definitely a makeup look that I'll be cracking out again I feel like it's a really good event makeup so even if you're not the bride but you're just going to a wedding where you've got a big event coming up I feel like something along the lines of this would be a really good one to pull out so definitely if you've got similar products or similar colors give them a go dust them off try it out, let me know what you think. But thank you so much for watching. I'll make sure that everything is linked down below that I've mentioned and I'll see you soon. See you on Wednesday with a brand new video. Bye.